Hi, uh, my name is Eve Bratton, and I've been in community health since for 30 some years. And as I want to say to what she was saying is, healthcare, being for healthcare, being for single payer, is pro-life. Yeah. It's pro-life to be for a pregnant woman to get her health care, to get maternity care. It's pro-life to give a child immunizations and health care. And it's pro-life to allow a young man or young woman to get adequate health care that when they're elderly, they have a healthy being. They are a healthy being and, be, can, and can be prosperous. Um, over the years, I started out at Matthew 25, and it, it, it's the same old story that they were, there were poor people there without health care, generational poor. And as the years went by, more and more people were having inadequate insurance and lack of health care. Now, today, it is across all economic boundaries. Even the wealthy have children who don't have health care. Um, it affects every family. Last week at a free clinic I was volunteering. There was a lady who because of a, another a clinic closing was without her diabetic medicine for six months. She's now in renal failure and before my eyes you know she's literally dying. And um, she was told because she has no health insurance, she doesn't qualify for any program because she is an illegal immigrant, that if she feels bad, she can come into the dialysis center and have a treatment. Anyone who knows that kidney failure is a three time a week, but she doesn't have that option available to her. So to her family, she's slowly dying. And it's unconscionable you know, to allow something like this to happen unconscionable. And she um, is among thousands and hundreds in our community that are going without health care. This was the first year I had two women argue with me when I wanted to send them to the hospital because they were having chest pains. One woman told me she would rather die than go to the hospital and lose her house for her family. She would rather die, so she chews aspirins to keep her arteries open. And this is a woman who has worked her whole entire life. She was worked in the, in the non-for-profit agencies, so she has no health care. Again, it's tr tremendously immoral. And how can we be a strong nation? How can we be a wealthy nation and let our citizens die? Thank you. Yeah. It seems like a lot more people are frustrated and they're starting to realize that they're not alone. You know, um, when you have articles in, in Money or Business Week saying that 43 million people are uninsured in, in this country, you know, that people have to realize that there's something bigger going on here. Human beings come together in societies so as to help other human beings. That's why societies are set up so we can help each other and do the things that the human beings can do together that they can't do apart. The more voices speak up, the more people unite to make a change, they can. And it will happen. It, but people have to want to with anything else in this world. You got to want change bad enough to work for. Economic human rights and, and our focus on health care as a human rights is a way to begin to galvanize the people who are victimized by this so they can take their own life in their own hand and not have some savior save them but they become their own savior. I just think it's great to have an organization behind you because by yourself it's harder to fight for what you're entitled to. It's easier to fight when you're a group and your voice is louder. You know. Um, I would encourage anybody who's having problems with health care or just problems with economics in general, just having trouble finding a place to eat, 
or find a place to sleep. I would encourage all those kind of people, all of us, uh, uh, other people like me, to be part of an organized group because your voice seems to be heard better when it's backed up by other voices.